of a different kind, heading to remote Davis Station in Antarctica for what promises to be the adventure of a lifetime. Good luck. You know, down there you're going to need to keep warm, so there's a hot water bottle uh, for, for you. Uh, also, Tim Tams. You can't oh, go anywhere wonderful. without your, your Tim Tams. toughest times we had down there was we, we had a plane crash. It really taught me a lot about the role of a leader through adversity. And it doesn't matter whether it's a plane crash, a natural disaster, a financial crisis, whatever that tough time is, or that challenging time is, the rules are exactly the same for the leader. do everything you do in a normal community and uh, we didn't have a hospital. We had a surgery but we didn't have a hospital. So my two carpenters went and did two weeks training at Hobart Hospital to become theatre nurses and my two IT guys went and did two weeks training at Hobart Hospital to become anaesthetic assistants. Because who better to put you to sleep than the IT guys, huh? <laughs> but it had a benefit for me as the leader because the guys would come to me, you know, with these requests. One time it's, can we ski behind the back of a quad bike over the sea ice? Because there's no policy to say that we can't. So as the boss, can you make a decision about whether we can? Another day it was, can we sit in a baking tray and skid down the indoor stairs, through the cold porch doors, out into the snow and ice out the front? There's no policy to say that we can't. And I looked at them and I said, you're grown men. I'm, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but instead, I will remind you that our theatre nurse is a carpenter and our anaesthetic assistant is an IT guy. Knock yourselves out, fellas. Because the plumbers like it soft and the diesels like it crispy. And the plumbers are having it soft and the diesels are cooking it crispy and we want to have a meeting so you can decide how it should be cooked. No, we are not stopping a $20 million science program to decide how to cook bacon. You're on a roster. So once every 17 weeks, it's your turn to cook the bacon. Cook the way you like it. But the thing with bacon wars, every workplace has one. According to LinkedIn, the number one bacon war in Australian workplaces is dirty coffee mugs. Dirty kitchen areas, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's about respect. Uh, I was working with a bank recently and they said our bacon war is pizza boxes. It's when the traders work at night and they get pizza delivered and they leave the boxes lying around and the staff who come in the morning have to pick up after them. It's a, it's a bacon war. Yeah, but that's serious because rightly or wrongly, the perception is they're saying we're the money men. We can afford, you know, we, we make the money here. We're going to leave our stuff lying around and you can pick up after us. It's disrespectful. to cook the bacon, I did both. Ain't that hard. No. Just take some out before the rest. I put, <laughs> I put it in the Bain Marie and the guys came in at Smoko and they looked at it and they said, oh boss, you did both. You did soft and crispy. Yeah. <laughs> Learned that one at station leader school. <laughs> 